like a pastry. I didn't like it. Yeah. Like watching that. No, but you oh. can like see for real. Like, oh, this, this, oh, this is, is what. Oh, this is really hard to do. Yes. <laughs> and uh, puts things into perspective. Like you're watching like the best of the best against the best. Watch an average Joe go down the slope on oh the my like gosh. whatever like that. Like moguls. Yeah, the mo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That'd be awful. Yeah. Watch. You have like me doing it. I'm going like I'm stopping <laughs> yeah. on everyone. Yeah. And then, or just someone three minutes to do them. Someone who's never skied before, ask them to do it. You yeah, have that's like just rude. you have the complete that's sedentary rude. man try it, and then you have like the next up, a, a, like the an amateur, an amateur, and then you have the, the real qualifiers. guys do it. Yeah, and then you have Joe Rogan do it. Then you got Joe Rogan. Do it. <laughs> Joe Rogan. He's funny man. Hey everyone, welcome to Mission Stories. My name is Troy, and I'm here with Lyndon. Hey Lyndon. Oh hey. How you doing? I'm all right. This is the second uh, episode that we've recorded this week. We're on a roll. We're on a roll. Nice. Uh, I guess you could say. We're here. We're joined by a guest. Her name is Kara. Is it oh. Kara? Kara? Kara. Kara. I mean, yeah. Take Kara. <laughs> Do people ever say that as they're saying goodbye? <laughs> no, but that, that's a good one. I haven't heard that one before. Have you really not? No, or are I you just saying that? <laughs> You're like... I've never heard it. Please don't start. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's officially <laughs> begun. Yeah, you can go for it. I probably just won't notice. We'll say that's how we'll <laughs> sign off today's. Uh, Good plan. That's how I'll sign off, maybe. <laughs> um. So, Kara, you're a, an exercise scientist. You're a <laughs> doctor of uh, science, Mo- body motion, body motion expert. enthusiast, and expert. <laughs> Among other things, you teach children the wonders of the human body. Oh, That's not yes. quite maybe how I would say that, actually. But I did teach sex ed, so I mean... Okay, then you do, do. teach yeah. little kids the, wonder, the wonders. Body. You're a phys ed teacher for a junior high, you said? Yes. Um, teach them the wonders and the shame. The shame. <laughs> That's what the church is for. Um, not, not schools, huh? Not, well, not I don't know. Do they teach shame in school? No, we teach safety they shy away from shame don't they yeah pretty Kids much we shy away from any value judgments on the <laughs> act of well any risk-taking intercourse behaviors. we just are like these are the facts these are the pros and cons these are the possible outcomes don't be dumb do you but, think you know, they're students so they're <laughs> dumb anyway they're right years old. i was gonna say like do you think that a, a <laughs> child that i don't know that they can process those things Yes. I, and, and I mean, like, the like, here's the pros and cons, or are they just so, like, driven by their own hormones and emotions that, like, really anything you're saying is, like, In over their head? The yeah. Well, the the biggest thing, especially with the that age group, is the neurocognitive development isn't, is just sort of starting. Like, so the mm. prefrontal cortex, the part of your brain that's, like, this makes sense. This is a good idea or a bad idea. I don't think that that's great for you to do. Uh-huh. Isn't a fully develop, fully developed or b connected to the amygdala, which is like the center sort of ape part of your brain, which is your desires and your reward center oh. and like where you feel excitement. Yes. And so like, like it's so funny because they know that they're it, like you talk to students, they know that they're doing something wrong, uh-huh. but they like can't help themselves because they get to the point where this is a good idea, mm-hmm. and then they start doing the idea before it's come full circle, and they're like halfway through it already before they're like, oh, maybe this is not a great idea because they haven't like they haven't don't have the ability to actually think through all the possible consequences, right? And like link them up with the that desire like the desire is so much more um ingrained and so much more active Uh that even if they can tell you i don't like this is the possible consequence like the reward of feeling so good taking that risk is like way more important and way much more of a motivator than any possible bad outcome i once jumped off of I was at the zoo, the Calgary Zoo, and there's a dinosaur section of this zoo. And there's, oh, and they have like those pla- those like there's whatever. rock platforms. Watch the lamp. She Sorry, just totally hit my hit lamp. Um, I'm a big hand talker. I was like, that's okay. Just watch that lamp. I'm just kidding. Um, anyway, I jumped off. It must have been I don't know eight feet, and I really hurt my heel. And I don't know why I did it, but I was with friends, and I guess I was trying to be cool. Yeah. Do you think that that was me 
not having my brain fully developed yet. And I was 18 at the time, 17. Partially, yeah. Mm. And partially social pressures. So like the other thing about um, that heightened um, reward center Mm -hmm. is that you're going to do things based out of feelings of loyalty and um, desired outcomes Mm -hmm. versus any possible negative outcomes. So if your desired outcome is that your friends think, oh, that was awesome, like you're you're going to do anything to get that desired outcome. It uh-huh. doesn't matter how stupid it sounds. But if your desired outcome, like for someone, let's say that's like introverted, is for people to like not notice you. Right. You are going to completely avoid any activity that could potentially be mm. outlandish or or get that attention. Yeah. yeah. And you got to be careful at the zoo. You do. Yes. I've seen we were on a school trip to the zoo. Uh huh. Teenagers. Uh huh. Curtis threw a piece of salami into the wolf den. Who's Curtis? Well, exactly. <laughs> by the time the salami even like hit the hit the ground and the wolves were on it, zoo staff hauled him away. We never saw Curtis again. They threw him into the wolf pit after. Yeah. So yeah. like he took a risky thing. He's like, "Hey guys, check this out. I'm check gonna feed me. the wolves." Yeah. He's like, the "Salami didn't hit the ground, and there's like guys in black shirts hauling him away." <laughs> yeah. And They're I diligent. Like, I was like, where were they? And they're they? on a budget. Now there's a zoo. I feel like there's like a clause, like an unwritten clause. Like, you know, like you like read those acknowledgement of risks, but not really. And then yeah. you sign it. I feel like and that's it, part of it. And it says, yeah. if you throw any a salami into the wolf cage, we'll turn you into an exhibit. Yeah. And now there's We're going to turn you into salami. Yeah. And we feed the wolves because yeah. we're on a budget and we need to. Now they have the taste for salami. So we have to turn <laughs> them into salami. So. <laughs> And that's what the Calgary Zoo has been up to, and it's a good thing that we went to the bottom of that. Um, Figured it out. I feel like we've really, this is like a benchmark where we actually have like a scientist on the show. I'm not a scientist, we're, unfortunately. We're going what full is show, your, Rogan. What is your full curriculum vitae? Uh, I actually took a Bachelor's of Fine Arts mm. and a minor in kinesiology and then okay. education. Hmm. So I'm an artist. Not so a you really know nothing about anything. <laughs> no, I'm totally just pulling all of this out of my butt. Uh, of well, it's convincing. I mean, <laughs> I had a, I do have a question though about yeah. like, so when is your, I has, is the age 25? Is that the, sort of the thing where it's like your brain finally develops and it does connect to the amygdala and you sort of have a better filter upon your decisions at that point or that's the, when General, does that yeah, it's like twenty four to twenty six seven. It it differs from person to person, obviously, because cognitive development is very individualized. Personal. Yeah, and it depends on like a lot of different factors, from genetic to environmental, like mm. and like any. How much Wheaties you eat? Yes. Mm. Yep. <laughs> Your bran intake. Yeah. Things like that. <laughs> so that's why sure. some people are eternally 20 years old. Yeah, that makes sense. I remember turning <laughs> 25 and I just like immediately stopped self mythologizing myself. Like the dream was over. <laughs> <laughs> the dream was over. Like I was no longer like a folk hero of my life. I was just like another dude in this world. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that's totally about like I, now that you say that, I happened to me too. Like I just, for some reason, like you're not the center of the world anymore. Like you actually realize that there's other people living in it. You realize what a loser you've been this whole time. <laughs> like you're not special. <laughs> yeah. Your and mom that's was just, lying. That's just your teenage brain fooling you. Yeah. Yeah. That like this thing you're in, it's, it's a movie and all these people are serving you. The guy at McDonald's oh. is like just a side character, but he's the center of his own life because he's likely a teenager. And he's experiencing the exact same thing as you are. Teenagers That's definitely so think that they're the center of the universe. Don't you still kind of feel like you're the center of it all, though? I definitely feel like an observer, I would say now. Really? Oh, for sure. So you're an extra in someone else's life. Uh, not an extra in someone <laughs> else's life, but I definitely am very much aware that, like, this is going to sound so pessimistic, but, like, no one cares. No yes. one cares about, like, what I'm doing with my life. Like before I kind of thought that people like Uh really paid attention and they were like so judgmental and so like scrutinous of like the thing, everything that I was doing. Uh And now I'm at the point where I'm like, I like people actually, as soon as I'm out of their door, they don't think about me ever. 
I would. That's well, my personal opinion. I wouldn't say they don't care. I would no, say yeah, they're just. Cares, no. They have zero investment. Is yeah. what I would say. <laughs> How are those two things to not? not just, they might care. They're kind of. There was mm. a they, lot of overlap. There might In be that some Venn care. Diagram, some, yeah. I feel like there's just shelves. Well, yeah. it's like if someone, <laughs> if someone had like a gun to your head. Man, mm. that's that's too extreme. That's pretty. No, extreme. put the gun up to your head. Go on. Okay. Okay. So there's a gun up to your head. Commit to this metaphor. I'm gonna. Tr- I don't know what I'm gonna do. See, this is the problem because I don't know what I'm gonna do. I've never been in this situation where someone's been holding a gun up to Kara Henry's head, and I gotta do what? <laughs> I don't know what I'm supposed to do. It's hey, stop that! Don't yeah. do that. I guess the question is like, what are the, what's the point? Is I would it? care. Oh, okay. The point is I would care. Like <laughs> I guess the the metaphor I was trying to make is that like if I saw you in some sort of trouble, I think basic human decency for me would dictate and hopefully for us all, Lyndon. Why are you looking at me like that? Because you I got a smirk why. on your face. No. Oh. <laughs> that you're gonna try to help someone in need that you that you see no matter who they are. Um, yeah. No, they've already debunked altruism is just a. Uh, evolutionary process to gain your favor for yourself have you seen that video of that it's and this is awful and i hesitate to bring it up even but (laughs) there's a video of this subway on a subway i think it's new york or somewhere and there's this old lady on the train and another guy comes up kicks her in the head what like three times and everybody else is like filming this Hmm. oh that's such a such a ethical dilemma. And then the other, and then the guy like looks into the camera and he's like, uh, pro star this or whatever. I don't know what it's called. World star. World star. Yeah. Oh. He's like world star that mother effer. And no one stops him. They just film it. No, they film it. That I think they, they catch him so eventually much. though. Well, yeah. I'm like, just like do something. What? Like filming doesn't do anything. What would you do though? In like, that I'd situation. Grab him. You grab him now. You're in a fight with him. Yeah, true, but like generally speaking, but I you got to do something. Than him. If someone's kicking an old lady you know? <laughs> in the head, Lyndon, what you would you do? do? You got to uh, you got to like step between them. You got to like de-escalate it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, do you have to like po- fight him? Fight do you him? have to no. shiv that guy? Probably not. <laughs> might, but like that's the thing from is, the one, the shiv that you got just hanging out in your pocket. If you ride the New York subway, you got something. <laughs> you at least have a sharpened toothbrush. At the you got a pen, you got a sharpened you got a pen that you like yeah. click, just like ready to go. Yeah, you're like holding onto a bick in your pocket, really tight, just like. Ready to go. <laughs> um. Yeah, I don't know what I would do. I guess. Uh, oh I mean, no! Here's what I was gonna I was gonna say this though. Like my and let me tell tell me what you think of my proposed strategy if this ever were to happen. My strategy would be to talk to the guy or confront the guy in a way that it's like totally separate from what is happening in that moment. So like, let's distract him out. Yes. Like, let's say you guys are fighting or something or about to fight. I would come up and be like, uh, I was like, Henry, Billy, Billy, is that you? It's me. It's Fred. It's for remember from high school and then kind of like get up close, sort of like to stop it in a non-confrontational way. I feel like to kind of play that the fool a bit. Not work. No. Because just speaking from experience, not in fights, uh-huh. but like when you're like so focused on the thing that you're doing, yeah, you don't like you don't hear the things around you, right? You don't notice them. But that's the maybe the point is that you're trying to sort of uh, reboot their system and take them out of. Um, what's the you gotta the, do something zany what's the Daniel Kahneman thing where it's like uh, there's two modes of the, think fast the type and one slow. thinking and type two thinking oh yeah. no I know you mean like high and low road take them into like yeah. the slow thinking instead of just the like the instant feedback reaction. you're like hey what's yeah. 18 times 3 and they're like oh I gotta stop and think about hold that. on let me stop <laughs> fighting for a second would. and <laughs> Does anyone have a pen and paper? <laughs> I feel like that's a Monty Python sketch. <laughs> Waiting to happen. Yes. Or s- like a s- something. Yeah, we should do it. Yeah. That, Let's yes. act it out right now. The, a bat and a baseball <laughs> cost a dollar ten together. The bat costs a dollar more than the ball. How much is the ball? Ten. False. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> you got to stop and think about it. I knew that... <laughs> The intuitive answer is wrong. I Always. knew that whatever the first thing I was going to think was wrong, and I fell for it. 
to trigger. I used to do that to people all the time. Trick people? Well, no, just ask them that question. <laughs> and see just, what they would say. Because you didn't know the answer. You were just trying to find the right answer. No, You're I, like, I, people help me. i got to ask everybody no, I question. literally just don't know. I need the answer. <laughs> the internet won't solve it. No. No. Damn the internet. Yeah. That's you know. That's when you're like in school as an economist. You want to chew people's behavioral, you know, stuff. You roll. You rolled your eyes four or five times. Yeah. In like six words. <laughs> <laughs> so for every break, every breath between yeah, the words, every is an eye roll. Word. It's not. It's a new punctuation. I'm sure you ask people could weird things when you're studying economics. That's fair. Fair enough. What's the weirdest thing you've ever asked someone in the study of economics? A ball yeah, and a bag cost a dollar ten, and the bag <laughs> cost a dollar more than the ball. Bag. I don't know. Yeah, I definitely would always get people with uh, those cognitive questions. Yeah, you know, a lake has lily pads on it, Troy. <laughs> okay. Each day, the surface area of the lily pads oh double. Boy. All right. On day twenty-four, uh-huh. the lake is completely covered. Yes. On what day was it only half covered? Twenty-three. Nailed it. Yeah, I know math a little bit. Uh, you could say I got a major in finance. <laughs> anyway. Um, <laughs> Good segue. <laughs> I was like, I literally, I know close to nothing about finance, though, despite my major. So please don't ask me anything about it. Oh, here's the one thing I, I do know. Um, just buy the index. Just buy the market. The index that represents the the entire market because there's been no uh, hedge fund manager ever, I think, who has beat the market in terms of like return on investment right. more than two years in a row. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's better, yeah. you'd be better off to just buy the market. Anyway, so that's my That's advice. what I say. All the financial advisors I know are just like, no, no, no. No, 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 no. I'm the, smarter than the market. The managed, the managed funds will always beat it. Do you know why they say that? So they can make sales. That's right. Because they get money based off of your... Uh, your um, I've never heard of people being less than honest to make sales. Mm, <laughs> that's a new thing. Oh, my gosh. Um, I was about to tell you a story of a hor- the time I sold alarm systems and the horrible thing that happened, but... I don't know. Maybe I should. Maybe we should get back to our guest, who is a <laughs> science artist. Artist. Those a things exist. A sartist. A sartist. All right. It's like a satirical. A yeah. S- a satirist. That's the word I was looking for. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you do know quite a. It sounds like. Uh, so we were talking about this a little bit before. Mm. You're a CrossFit candidate in the CrossFit Games. No, I wish I was that good. That'd be amazing. I would love that. But isn't it like a like a countrywide or like a worldwide, a worldwide. thing where yeah. like at some now how does that work? Is it like different gyms have? Oh, don't call it a gym. Oh, you can call it. That's a gym. the wrong word. What's it? That's the right word. Oh, oh box. Called? Right, right, right. Yeah. I knew that. Box. <laughs> I'm supposed to know that. Do you even go to CrossFit? Do you even CrossFit? Do you even lift, Do you bro? Like that? But do you back? To, yes, I do. <laughs> back to your question. There are. Why is it called a box? First of why all, why is it called a box? Yes, because it's pretty bare. I think it, there's like a lot of, um, like I mean, like with every area in life, there's a lot of like syntax and rhetoric, uh huh, and like things like box, RX, AMRAP. Like there's all of these different like words, okay, around the culture that really don't like. Or just a simple way of, or like a colloquial way of like putting something. You use just you use so many words that describe words in that <laughs> sense. I loved it every minute of it. It's so meta. Um, do you, I get, now here's a question for you. I've always sort of thought that, or I've heard that it's a bit of like a, it's cult-like in its followers and in its, it's prescriptions for how to do exercises and it's a lifestyle and it's you know what box and I, let's not call it a cult Why let's not? call it a religion call it a you know what though i it's religion. like so similar it's so eerily similar similar to like mormonism or uh. i should say the church of jesus christ of latter-day saints culture okay in that like like you know and like 
this I'm totally generalizing and, and, and being stereotypical, but you know, when someone's like Go a new <laughs> convert <laughs> to the church, like everything is about the church and they talk to everybody about it. Yes. And it is like their whole everything. And, and they're like obsessed yeah. and about they it. They make you feel bad for how, yeah. Like, and it, it lasts for about like, <laughs> Mm, one to two years like that sort of like really intenseness yeah crossfit is the same people like find it and then all of a sudden they like they have this like revelation that this is how life is supposed to be and this is how exercise should be and they like they like forget everything else that they knew beforehand and like abandon their children kind of and they convert to the like crossfitism and it's really intense and everyone sort of that like kind of goes through it kind of goes through it a little bit i definitely did a little bit and okay. like you kind of get shaken awake and you're like this is like cross training it just by like another <laughs> name and it's really the the big thing in both that my my understanding or my um analysis of it is the big center or the big pull in both is the community yeah and it's like when you don't have that kind of community center or if um it's, it's just like going to classes with a group of like-minded people or going to church with a group of like-minded people and being able to like finally find or like, or if you haven't had it in a while, that kind of connection with human beings yeah. is really what the buy-in is. Okay. But like, it's like a head fake. Like you think it's like the organization, but it's yeah. really actually about the connections that you're making with human beings. Interesting. That's my theory anyway. So, how far into this are you? Like, how long have you been doing CrossFit for? Like, are you like a level seven acolyte or? I wish. I'm, I've been doing it for about three years <laughs> in that I've been doing classes just to kind of get back into shape. And then I've been humming and hawing over the idea of like actually competing. Yeah. And I sort of like dipped my toe in last year and then I kind of like freaked out and went away from it. because Why? Uh, because I knew what the commitment was like playing basketball. I played university basketball and I knew that that kind mm. of commitment level was like up there. Right, 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 yeah. And I would just like, I loved the idea of competing in a sport again, but I also did not like the idea of like the time energy and focus kind of commitment that's required of it. Yes. And so I kind of was like, Oh, this is great. And I'm like, Oh, this is not a good idea. And then I pulled away and now I'm kind of like, dipping my toe back into it are you still in university no so you're graduated are you still like playing basketball for uh like a someone girls league or something yeah. um i have this is the first year i haven't actually mm. i most i have pretty much ever since university played a like old ladies ball <laughs> is um, that a thing that's what we call it it's all like it's all like alumni like it's all people that have played somewhere before okay but we're all old ladies so we don't like sprint oh. as much up and down the court. <laughs> it's mm. it's strictly <laughs> passing. There's no uh, running. No, there's running. It's just like it's <laughs> everyone and kind of, there's this sort of like unwritten unspoken agreement that like we're not going to go <laughs> Don't get like, too serious about it. No, but for real though like like we're not going to go 100% because our bodies can't handle it anymore. Right. Yeah. But, you know, you might still run <laughs> a, you might run a play or something. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you might <laughs> You might get like one or two like spurts where you're like, oh yeah, go for the fast break. But then it's like, oh, that was, Ooh, that was hard. That was taxing. I don't know if I want to do that again. <laughs> we'll do that till next game. Yep. Um, <laughs> that's interesting. So are, you are going to compete. Is this your official uh, announcement that you're going to? I'm going to try. I am right now. CrossFit I, Games. Oh gosh. That is like a level so far above me right now. I'm just looking to compete locally at a sort of advanced level okay well you know what they say shoot for the moon land in the gutter yep yep wait no that's no mm. no how that's does the phrase it. go shoot for the moon shoot for the moon land in the... shoot for the stars shoot for the moon land slingshot sling... like armageddon use, use the, the gravity, gravity of the earth to sling around into the sun to your goals the sun. <laughs> <laughs> Be destroyed by your goal, which is the sun. That is the phrase. Have it be all consuming. And let your let the flames of our sun consume you. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. That sounds about right. Yeah. Yeah. Explain to me competing in CrossFit. Because I understand it's like you work out so you can be like 
good at basketball because you want to yeah. be like good at the sport. So you need to get your body ready for it. But this mm-hmm. is like, we got to get our this body like ready to be body ready. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's like, have you ever watched the sport of Olympic weightlifting? I've seen some clips. I've seen it. Okay. So like it's kind of similar in, or like in that, or even like you think about like triathlon or racing, like people run to get fitter, but people also run to race. Yes. And people do triath like they swim to get fitter, but also like swim to race. So this is purely It's like it's fitness to racing. Get fit. It's this fitness just, racing. It's like who can be fit the fastest. Yes, that's it. Who, who can, can do ex- the, exercise? It's faster. workouts, right? Yeah. It's like that's yeah. what it is. It's like yeah. do fifty push ups, uh ten pull ups, walk on your hands for a mm-hmm. hundred yards or something. Clean two hundred pounds. Clean like, two hundred. Uh, yeah. Try not to cry. If you cry, you have to start over. I hear that's one rule. Uh, yes. <laughs> Why? Yeah. <laughs> Tears of joy. Um. But yeah, it's essentially it's fi- it's fitness racing. I've seen it before. <laughs> I uh, I remember there was one guy who had like red hair. He's Canadian. Pat Vellner. And he's like he's the man. really buff and everything. <laughs> and I was just like. Basic, like the way they sell it is like they're trying to turn people into Batman, I think, was, was someone like the organizer of the thing. Yeah, said once. that was kind of like, wow, they, they hype it up so much. Like they make it like so overdramatic. But like the whole idea, and this is where people I think get their hairs crossed, is that CrossFit as a training modality to like get people healthier mm-hmm. is very different than CrossFit as a sport. Okay. Because there's so many skills involved as far as the CrossFit as a sport. And it's not necessarily just like who can run the fastest. So do you think that like doing CrossFit, it is going to help you to like, like if I were to go today to a box, my local box, Mm, CrossFit box, and I was going to do some stuff there in, I don't know, six months time, would I be sort of ready to enter the games? No. Oh, Sorry. Okay. <laughs> hate to burst your bubble. Unless you're just Why? like some dormant genetic freak. And I could be. You could be. I'm not saying that you're not. I mean, not probably in a good way, but like <laughs> probably there's a lot of bad things about my body that I don't know. Laying dormant, waiting to out. pop up and, and really put me through a loop at some point. Mm-hmm. When I hit 30 in six months, I'm really waiting for something like that to pop up, you know? Yeah. Happy birthday. You have a bum hip, two toes oh, on your forehead toes. now. <laughs> your feet all of a sudden just get wet. Yeah. Except that would make you so much <laughs> your better feet at fall swimming. Off. <laughs> 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 You're a genetic freak. You have no feet now. Yeah. yeah. Turns out you were missing ligaments in your knees this whole time. Turns out you shouldn't have been <laughs> They're gone. walking They're gone. any distance at all. Um, okay, so look, can we talk about some of like the um I love how this is all about CrossFit now, but I am quite interested in this and I've That's like, okay. I never uh, talked to someone who's actually like a CrossFitter. <laughs> what about the the um the negative uh sort of accusations of CrossFit? Um I think the biggest one that I've heard is that you're asking the like not the game side of it, but like mm. sort of for the average Joe. Right. You're asking a lot of people to to do these motions that maybe they've never done before and to go really hard at it and to and there's I swear there's all these videos on the internet of crossfitters just horrible form. <laughs> which I love those videos so much of like the guy yeah. This is—I don't think it's CrossFit, but it's like a guy trying to do like a deadlift, and his back is just oh, like, like so arched like a cat, you know, <laughs> trying to yank and jerk Ooh. the weight up. Well, if you're not strong enough to lift it, you can use the tension of your the curvature no. of your spine. No, 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 no. <laughs> you can it's do that, but you shouldn't. You ought not to ought do to. that. No, that's okay. like. So don't do that. Uh, that kind of criticism, I don't entirely sure where it comes from because in my experience i've actually been very fortunate in that i've only ever really been to good gyms where like the coaches are very diligent Mm -hmm. about making sure that they know everyone that's in the class and knowing their abilities and like modifying all the movements to their abilities like i've had coaches tell me 
like because I'm just you know like a butthead and obstinate and I'm like no I'm gonna do it like it's supposed to be done and they're like no you're not you're an idiot you do it like this and you kind of have like a little pouty four-year-old argument with them but you're like both in your wait 20s. so they're trying to tell <laughs> you're both in your <laughs> <laughs> neither of your brains have attached to no. your amygdala yet you're, yeah. Uh, yeah no but they're like they're pr- like as far as i the boxes that i've been to have been very diligent in making sure that everyone in the class is able to do the movement and if they're not able to do the movement modifying it so that they can do something that works the same muscles but it's not going to hurt them and i think i think the problem that you run into is like anything where you get bad bad gyms that are like just like scraping the bottom of the barrel they're like we got the certifications that we need to open a gym and that's all we care about yeah and they're not like doing more education or learning the best possible ways of teaching someone how to do a squat properly or pull up progression or whatever and so you get people going to those gyms and getting hurt or you get people watching like the CrossFit documentaries on Netflix and then going to like your local good life being like, hell yeah, I'm going to go do I'm some do CrossFit that. and just like totally <laughs> jacking themselves up. Yeah, I think it's all, all the criticism was coming from like Olympic lifting coaches who were like, um, excuse me, you have to come to us to learn to do these lifts. You can't just go to CrossFit. <laughs> you think so? So then. Well, it'd be like. It'd be like me watching, and this is totally me being um, elitist. Yes, for <laughs> sure. I'm being judgmental and elitist, but it's like me watching someone coach basketball that has only ever played high school ball, uh-huh. and I'm like, oh, like, oh, that's not how you should do. Like, I mean, it, uh, and it just hurts me a little bit yeah. to watch them like either teach them how to shoot quote unquote properly yeah. or like teach them a system and or teach them how to play defense, and I'm like, you're doing it wrong, like. It's not going to hurt them. Yeah. But it's not the best way to do it. Right. And it's just going to like make it harder for them in the long run. And so what you're seeing in a lot of places now is that they're like listening to those criticisms and they're like, oh, well, maybe we'll actually bring in an Olympic lifting coach Tuesday and Thursday nights to do an Olympic lifting class period, not CrossFit Olympic lifting. And they're also having like gymnastics coaches coming in to teach people how to do like proper gymnastics movements and progressions. Mm -hmm. And a lot of places are do are like doing that. Cause I think, well, like if you go to a box and they don't do that and they're like, no, we know everything like run the other (laughs) way so fast because it's like, unless someone can recognize that they're, fallible and that they don't know everything like they're not someone that you want to learn from um i wanted to maybe this is a good place to bring this up or to talk about it but do you feel like that there's um a a deluge of just a flood of people who are quote unquote experts and they're like do you know what i mean like i just Mm -hmm. feel like whenever i scroll through facebook I get these ads from random people <laughs> who have decided to become, I don't know, digital marketing experts or oh, yeah. fitness people mm-hmm. or name the thing. And well, the, we have to we have to take into account that you get very targeted ads on I Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like this is a- so here's a backstory. <laughs> uh, yes. If you have any interest at all. <laughs> In, uh, I kind of wanted to make a sketch about this actually, where like if you've been quote unquote targeted. So like if you, if you Google search anything to do with like, um, I don't know, making film or like, uh, marketing a, a small business or anything like that. Now you're targeted as someone who's interested sort of in that thing. And you just get like hit in the face constantly with these stupid, um, Hey, ads are hard and you need my help to do them sort of things. So, but there's also that with it's, I don't know. It just seems like the, the age of everyone is, uh, and maybe this is just my own frustration coming out, but I'm just like, is everybody doing this? Is everyone just like an expert now in something? I think that's like, and I think they're putting still, ads we, out. We still got to fill in the backstory for you. Yeah. I didn't um, know what you were like searching tro- for. <laughs> 
Troy will get like ads for like conspiracy stuff. Yeah, I get cons- and he's like, and he's like, that popped up on your news feed, right? And it's like, no, Troy, that's it's, it's just you. It's just you searching about conspiracies. Yeah. So you're the one that gets. Those I love ads. that the guy that works for the CRA is the one yeah. searching up conspiracies. Well, I'm a big conspiracy nut. <laughs> um, we should talk about that someday on the podcast. All my conspiracies. Crazy uh, opinions about things. I am not a flat earther. I believe that the earth is round. Uh, just throwing that, that out just there. Be known. <laughs> I believe space is real. Uh, <laughs> jury's you, out on aliens. I'm not sure. I you did in almost aliens. get into a really? fist fight yeah. with someone go-karting. So, yeah, here's a funny story. <laughs> Over 9-11. I was, oh, uh, really? Yeah, my old bishop. Uh, <laughs> so I think a mutual friend, the Urson backs, do you know them? Yes. Yeah. Kelly was getting, I freaking love them. Is either Kelly or Jake was getting married. I think, uh, I forget who. It was um, Jake. Cause I wasn't there. Was it Jake? Okay. okay. That's right. That's right. So Jake was getting married, just a mutual friend. Anyway, we do a thing and my old Bishop is there and I know him decently well. And he's, and I had just graduated university. So we're sort of talking about like. Maybe him helping me get a job or like sort of make some contacts and, right. you know, the work world. And we're like, oh, great, good, wonderful. Fast forward later in the evening, we're eating cheeseburgers. And I had just watched, oh, I don't know, <laughs> six to 18 hours of uh, 9 11 <laughs> conspiracy. <laughs> Theory. Range six to eighteen. Yeah, <laughs> anywhere in there. <laughs> anywhere in there. Minimum six, though. <laughs> maybe max is more than eighteen. But at that point, maybe you know. Yeah. yeah so yeah. um, it was really top of mind for me, and mm-hmm. I was just like ready to preach, like you said, you know, like with CrossFit, like with the church. I had just been baptized into the church <laughs> of nine eleven. Was an inside job by, by George Bush, and um, actually, I don't quite believe that necessarily but uh it's, it's plausible it's fishy it's really fishy uh anyway so i, I <laughs> i'm just like and i'm just interested to talk about this stuff so i'm just like hey do you guys know about like building seven and the pentagon and there's a lot of fishy stuff and a friend of the podcast theo gibb was there and he's like uh he's he's trying to defuse the situation because he sees that my bishop this guy that i'm trying to be making good with you know is not having it. He's not having it. He went to Harvard, and so he spent. Mm-hmm. He was in Boston, I think, around the time when that happened. Well, in the Boston Marathon bombing thing. And- yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's he was like he sort of has an affinity for New York and a sort of a connection to that. And uh, he was like personally offended at the thought, because my the whole point I was trying to make was not that like, like I wasn't trying to be offensive to anyone who like died in that tragedy i was just saying that like <laughs> i'm just asking questions you know i'm just, <laughs> I'm just raising questions yeah here. and anyway so he was very upset by that and he said to me at, at a certain point like um it was getting heated between he and i and i was trying to be like ah, i don't know what's going on but like still theo tells <laughs> this joke he's like here's a funny joke uh um, uh, 9-11 conspiracy theorist um, has all these crazy questions but he doesn't find all the answers And he, but then he dies and then he goes to heaven and God says well welcome to heaven you're allowed to ask me one question about anything you've ever wanted to know what would you like to ask me and so naturally he asks so was 9-11 an inside job and God says no it was just terrorists and they you know, got into a plane and they flew into the buildings and it was a real tragedy and then the guy goes, uh, it goes even higher than I thought. <laughs> so he tells well, that. Well, you know, God bless America. God right? bless America. He tells that <laughs> joke, tries to ease the tension. Yeah. Ultimately, the. It didn't diffuse. No, he's just basically, he's like, I want to punch you in your face for saying this. Have you ever had someone say that to you? That they're no. going to punch you in the face? Like an, like an adult. He's an adult. <laughs> His son was there. I've definitely felt that about It was people. a party. <laughs> <laughs> it was a celebration of a <laughs> wedding. <laughs> he was threatening yeah. to punch me. I was like, please don't. And please give me a job. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, that didn't, that didn't turn out. But um, 
So I think it's an inside job, I guess. <laughs> and uh, I don't know. Listen, it's fishy. Uh, we won't get into it all now. But no. what were we talking the tr- about? The truth is out there. The truth is out there. What um, were we talking about? Oh, experts. Experts, mm. yes. And how I'm... Uh, Expert in 9-11. I'm an expert in 9-11. <laughs> I should do Facebook ads <laughs> for that. Um, I don't know. I guess what, I, uh, what I'm what i asking is, because you bring up, I guess what made me think of that is you talking about like when you see someone who's like kind of doesn't know what they're talking about teaching other people, you know, in that case, basketball, but in, mm-hmm. in this, you know, the broader idea of non-experts claiming themselves as experts and then teaching people. Is this a good thing? Is it is it good for someone who knows even a little bit more about something to teach someone who knows pra- next to nothing? Like is that okay? Um, I think that it's a it's a question of what your intent is. Yeah. If your intent is to do it so that you get money out of that person. That's almost always that's what always the, intent the intent is. Yeah. Um but like I think the the other question also is um, whether or not you are actually seeking to become an expert. Because a lot of the time, and I don't like correct me if I'm wrong, but a lot of people that are experts on things never call themselves that. They almost never do. They almost are just like I, oh, I like do this thing, and I know that or whatever. But yeah. like, they are just incredibly knowledgeable, and they but they don't they almost like don't need to sell themselves because yeah. they are so knowledgeable. And like, there's something to be said about starting out as an amateur and and recognizing that you are an amateur and just and being like, okay, like this is some of the stuff I have to offer, and this is what I'm going to teach you because this is how I know how to teach it. Yeah. But I but constantly seeking for like higher and better understanding and knowledge because mm-hmm. like you can't. You can't start an expert. No one starts an no. expert. You have to start somewhere. Right. But I think also the whole point, the whole thing that's super bothersome about that is like knowing that so like there can't be th- that many experts. Yeah. And they're just using it as a marketing ploy, and some poor sucker is just going to be like, yeah, like, hundred percent, like, and yeah. completely buy into it. Like, there's no. I feel like, and like, again, correct me if you think I'm wrong, but I feel like culturally there's no sense of cognitive dissonance or like objective, um, like evaluation of like the things that are like coming our way. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people like, they're like, oh yeah, that one thing that you said is like so true. And so then they just like grab all of it and they're like, the whole thing must be true because that one thing that you said was true yeah. or like vice versa. That one thing that you said was so wrong. So everything you're doing is awful. Well, the thing that you are maybe speaking to a little bit is just that there is a lack of nuance in our culture today where like based off of very little sample, very few samples of someone's uh, character, some things that they say, someone will make an assumption about them that is very, you know, pretty snap uh, and and rash. But I think that's also like a lot of people are just trying to create a business out of like very limited information. (laughs) Yeah. And you know what I mean? Like they're like, I know a little bit about this so I could totally sell it. Uh, And then, but then they never seek or really like do the hard work. Cause it also, like it takes money. It takes time. It takes effort. It takes resources generally to like get better at something and learn more about it. Mm -hmm. But I think a lot of people aren't willing to do that. I think a lot of people are like, I'm okay with where I'm at and like selling what I've got. Yeah. And I think that that's my biggest pet peeve anyway, is a lot of people like, like saying something as if a, it applies to everybody generally in a blanket statement. Yeah. Especially in things like like fitness or psychology or like life goals or whatever. It's like this whole this one thing's gonna change your life for sure. And it's like, are you really thinking about the diversity of your audience at all? And then the other thing too That's why is they target people like me. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. they're like they know exactly who they're selling to. Yeah, and then like also just sort of creating these and maybe actually, you know what? I backtrack. I think the thing that actually really bugs me is the idea that like there's a quick fix and this is the fix and this is the thing that's going to fix all of your problems. And that's kind of like the way that they sell it. Yeah. Versus like the way that anything actually works is trial, error, time, failure, 
repetition. Learning. Yeah. yeah, repetition. And like no one, that's not sexy. That doesn't sell. No one wants to buy that. Yeah. And so that's, no one does it. Well, I don't know. <laughs> what don't you know? <laughs> well, I'm trying to connect this thing. They talked about the rise of Trumpism. Yeah. I'm not sure exactly what Trumpism is. Me either. But they talk about... I thought, um, you, should, I thought you said me. Like, it's me. It's I'm, me. I I'm Trumpism. Trumpism. <laughs> uh, the idea that, uh, like, Americans grew distrustful of experts. And yeah. Like, like, the elites, like, academic elitism and things like that. And so they're like, now we're going to elect Donald Trump because he's not, like, supposed to be president. Yeah. And he's like... He's an outsider. But didn't they they're, elect they're him getting... because he's the economic expert and they were kind of in an economic crisis? He's a, he's a businessman, a successful yeah. businessman. Yeah. So they just so traded like... in one, and I'm totally using air quotes, but no one can see me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> traded in one expert for another kind of thing, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I think they, Except I think... he's not an expert. No, really. he's not. <laughs> no. I think the thing that they're trading is like the in sense marketing of like... He is, though. Not... Because I, I don't that highbrow thing that like elitism Mm -hmm. like they're not necessarily trading in experts or trading in the feeling of feeling inferior to someone that they can relate to well he is he's a sales expert but is that a result of all these fake experts rising up so now people are like i'm so sick of the experts yeah i don't think people like the feeling of being wrong or not knowing people don't like elitism you know what i mean like they they want an expert they don't want to be spoken down to, really. I think that's like the whole one of the sources of Trump's victory was that he was like, "Yeah, I'm one of you guys." You know, he spoke to. A I'm an idiot. Of, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like you. I'm just like you. Is that a good impression? Yeah, that was that's pretty. That's good. pretty close. Donald Trump. Yeah. <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> I'll work on it. Um. But yeah. So I. I don't know. I guess like I don't know what prompted me. It's just something I've been. This thinking about thinking about and just having to deal with on my Facebook, just these <laughs> ads. The um, thing that I've been of everybody, everybody becoming yes. starting some. Now I want to touch on this. I don't you, like the social influencer stuff, or it's like these people actually don't. They don't claim to know what they're doing, but they don't actually know what they're doing. They just look really good in yoga pants. Well, I don't know if they know what they're doing. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> but isn't that like half of life is being able to look good in yoga pants? That is half of life, yeah. That's what society You've has You've unlocked me. it. I you, haven't even tried this on is a yoga rev- pants. a revelatory experience. I wonder what well, I look like. What did we learn pants. from the fire Festival? <laughs> that what? it's all about branding. Those social influencers <laughs> will lie to you. Yeah, social influencers. Yeah. They're trying to influence. I mean, the, even the word influencers is like inherent in it is that they're trying to get you to do something. Yeah, well, and that's what they, that's what Mark, that's what brands use. Like, they get people that have lots of followers. Like, this is how people make money on Instagram. They get paid to make a post about a product. I know. Like, what? I want to be that. that? You want to be so hot. I really don't. I mean, I kind of, I just need to sip on like a bubbly water and I get paid. Drink a Perrier. Dollars. Yeah. (laughs) I would make so many posts. I'd do that. (laughs) <laughs> if that I was feel like it'd be, it'd be super funny to be like very postmodern and like ironic about it yeah to be like i'd pour this it is on the my best. crotch or something yeah like just pouring it all over your head and like because there's this there's this one <laughs> lady that does she's got the best and she's like australian she's the best instagram account i've ever seen where she takes like either like media images or like these very like highly circulated um it's like instagram posts and she reenacts them with her husband Mm -hmm. and they're hilarious i've seen that you've seen Mm, her oh they're so funny i'll have to take your word for it but it'd be it'd be like (laughs) one of those things where you're just like like you're you're like your whole post is about making money off of your post so it'd be like super meta and super funny but then like also very andy warhol and that you're making money from the Other, whole system yeah. by making fun of the system you know like you're I, like abusing the system to like use the system you know what mm. i think is that <laughs> i think that's hilarious like one of the reasons that people like podcasts at all is that there's a genuineness to them that it's it's unscripted and there's something about 
I don't know. I, like we were talking about when we were talking about experts. I think it's very easy to tell if someone is knowledgeable about the thing that they're talking yes. about or not. You know, like I think it's easy to pick that out. The longer that you talk that someone is talking, I think the easier it becomes to tell if they, mm. what kind of person they are and what they're about and everything. Well, and like real, like, I don't know about your experience, but when you talk to someone who's actually like a real expert in their field, yeah. when you ask them questions about it, they get so excited to answer your questions mm -hmm. and they get so excited about the topic that they almost like forget about themselves and they're just talking to you and they're like so animated and they're just like all of a sudden like an hour has gone by and you've just been chatting to them about whatever it is they're an expert in. Yeah. And they're just like, like, and they offer that information to you just because you asked. I've, I've, I don't know if I've ever spoken to an expert. Really? <laughs> I mean, I feel like Lyndon is sort of my, the, the, the closest thing to an expert I have is, is <laughs> in life. In like various fields, Lyndon is my personal conciliary on a number of topics mm -hmm. uh, wartime, mafia, uh, crime business running is one of them. Um, I don't know about that. Okay, no. <laughs> there's, a, there's a student I teach who is legitimately, knows so much about Russian history Ooh. and like, it's like it gets really dark. He's such a funny kid, and like, we'll go, we'll have like these, um, like small activities with like a smaller number of kids, and he makes, he talks about it all the time. He talks about Russian history all the time. Yeah, and he makes jokes all the time, and like most of them are very morose. Like Ooh. they are dark. And one, <laughs> one time I was just like, okay, I think that's like, like you're kind of like crossing a line. Like I think we maybe back it up, lighten it up a little bit. Uh -huh. He goes, Miss Henry, dark humor is like clean water. Only a few people get it. Oh. <laughs> oh. Just, does he get like keep a copy of like Solzhenitsyn in his back pocket everywhere Maybe. he goes? <laughs> like, what is that? I don't know. The gulag He's obsessed or something. The gulag archipelago. Do you ever like remember like being like obsessed with something when you were a kid? Yeah. But I feel like experts are like that. They're just like so obsessed boobs. with this thing. <laughs> boobs? <laughs> Do you know everything about boobs? Um, no, but uh, I I think I was obsessed with that as a young boy. Confession. <laughs> we'll edit that out. Um, <laughs> no, like most people be like Pokemon. Pokemon. Yeah, they or were... like you know when kids are like super obsessed with dinosaurs or trains was, or cars. What was your thing, Lyndon? Hmm. I definitely went through a dinosaur phase. Nice. And then I uh, yeah. went through a, a shark phase. <laughs> and then I learned to hate sharks. Why? They eat people. Jaws. It's, like, it's Jaws. like, you know, like the ocean. The ocean da -da. is, da -da -da -da. you know, it's quite the, the symbol <laughs> in mythology. The deep, dark, unknown. Yeah, I'm afraid. And there's sharks. scary things in there that'll kill you. The ocean They're itself killing machines. Is, is scary. Water is scary. I had a dream right before I woke up. Uh, this morning where I was able, I was with several other people and we were able to like stand on top of water using like surface tension or something on the water to like, it was really weird. That's but, cool. Uh, That's, that would be such a cool no like, sci-fi. But I've had a dream, dreams about sharks before. Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, you have a business. It is a very, very, very beetle Business. It's a, it's a baby <laughs> business. It's a business for babies. It's a business for babies. Baby boss business. Baby boss business. What's it about? What's your business? So let's plug your business. Let's, let's talk about your business. business. That's Speaking why about come on influencers and yeah. advertisements and experts. <laughs> Are you an expert? No, no, far from. I'm just interested in it, and it it was something that I started for myself, and then people were interested in it, and so. I started, like, I started, I made, um, like, a training log journal. Yeah. Because I couldn't find one that I liked. So this is, like, fitness related. It's, I'm trying to make it more generalized sports related. Okay. Because I was actually thinking about it when I was making it. I was like, oh, I wish I had this for when I was doing, like, shooting workouts. Yeah. And I could, like, have, like, a, or I wish I even just kept a journal of my shooting workouts so I could go back and look at, like, my progress or, like, make notes about things and, like, have something, like, written down to take to my coach to talk to them about um and anyway i just i i'm doing the logging thing right now with crossfit so that i can look at 
that kind of stuff. Yeah. And figure a couple things out. And it just kind of, I'm a very journal oriented person anyway. Like I like think through writing. And so it's very helpful to have like results of things and be able to like write notes on them so that when I go back, I can understand what happened. Yeah. Um, anyway, so I made it for myself. Like I was, I was doing my master's, um, and just like printed it at like the school print shop. Yeah. And then I, like 20 people asked me where they could buy it. Whoa. So then I was like, well, maybe I'll like print a few more. And then it, and then it kind of grew a little bit from there. And so now I'm making essentially training journals with, um, like with that in mind that people want them. And also with like, um, totally plugging my idea of like what sport is for yeah in like embedded into the journals with like trying to figure out how to extrapolate the things that you're learning from training and put them into like daily life practices because i think there's a lot of people that are like really good at working hard in the gym Mm -hmm. but they're like really crappy people oh Mm. right you know what i I don't know if you know you're just kind of going off like stars basketball you remember, <laughs> remember their their little motto: a star on the court and a star they, in before, life. In before the you life. started any practice for stars basketball, you said everyone was like, "It's better to be a good person than a good basketball player." Yeah, <laughs> every practice started. But I with think, that. Huh. but I it's think printed on the shirts. Yeah, I personally, I it's not, not everyone. Never again. Not everyone agrees with me, but personally, I think that the whole purpose of sport is like a training ground to figure out your crap. Ooh, I just hit the mic. Sorry. Um, and like bring those lessons into like your your life. Yeah. But like, I think a lot of people do sport for sport's sake because mm-hmm. they're like obsessed with winning and being the best in the accolades and stuff like that. Yeah. And I don't know that there really is anything wrong with that. I just think that that's not what I think sport is for. Mm-hmm. Um, because in the end, like at the end of the day, like, do you know, like, do you, can you really name like any of the Olympic gold winners from like 1992? Oh, let's try. Um, 92. Uh, Who? That was two who's the, old, so who's the, know. who's the lady man? Wait, Jenner, what? Jenner, Bruce. Oh, I think he won the gold. Ninety-two. It just happened to be that one. Um. All right. Well, we'll come back to that. Crap. I, <laughs> I said, "Lady man." <laughs> have you guys? Okay. Total side note. But have you seen um, <laughs> full-blown lady, Lyndon? <laughs> full-blown. Um. What's that BBC? Old Greg. Have you old, seen Greg. old Greg. Old Greg. I'm old Greg. I'm old Greg. Could you learn to love me? Yeah. yeah. Bailey's, this is Bailey's in the shoe. Yeah. This is Bailey's as close as you can get without getting your yeah. eyes wet. Yeah. Um, so where, where, what were you going to say, Lena? What was I going to say? I don't know. Back to the, oh, so now you're, you're Im- implementing your sports philosophy. But these I, are also yeah. like a journaling method. Like, isn't there like bullet journaling or like, is there some like method of journaling or something that you, you put in there or just the philosophy? Um, there's a, it's journaling. It's all questions. I think, I think my, my personal soapbox, if I'm allowed to get on it. Sure. Here you go. Thank you. Um, is that I don't think people are self-aware enough. And I, I like the idea of like giving them a tool to become Mm self-aware without them realizing that that's what they're doing. Like, I think the, the (laughs) guy, the, (laughs) The buzzword. So ironic. The buzzword is like in sport psychology is this like um, mindset and mindfulness and like like getting in the right mindset and mental toughness. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's all like goal oriented to like to like get mentally tough so that you can be the best. But I but like I think that that's like the real head fake. It's like you're actually getting mentally tough to like become a resilient person for when things go south in your life. Yes. That, Intr- and so like from sports. Yes. Yeah. It's like you're you're doing this in sort of this like safety net area it's where it's like m- totally okay to fail. It's a microcosm of your yeah, life. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. And so like the training journal has like questions about yourself and like basically asking you to think about be like do some like metacognition about like what you do and like how you mm. do what you do. Yeah. 
so that you become self-aware and you're like thinking that it's all for sport and performance and it is it like helps that i'm not saying it doesn't help that but it's really all about like your life and like becoming a more resilient and like thoughtful and self-aware person in general interesting have you ever thought about turning this into like um some sort of video series or like an audio series or you know sort of a an online course kind of a thing no but that's a good i thought about doing a podcast but that's about as far as i've gotten you know what you should do <laughs> <laughs> you should turn this into uh like a course or like a something that's like a something that people could just like download or something and passively then, receive yeah passively yeah both both of those things but yeah i don't know it's just some i don't know we can talk about it uh, <coughs> brainstorm you should, yeah we could brainstorm but anyway um how do people in the meantime um how would they get to your thing or contact you how it, in order to give you money <laughs> to for you to in give order, them like how do yeah. i get how do i get my journal yeah. So there's, I have like a Instagram page, um, the mental game. There's a period in between every word. So like the period, mental period game on Instagram. Okay. Okay. And there's, um, a website link in the bio. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. The mental game. Mm-hmm. Well, it sounds interesting to be honest. And I'm, I'm a big proponent of people becoming more self-aware and more, cause I think you're right. Like any, any weirdo you've ever met is weird because they're not aware of how weird they are. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, that's what it that's is. That's true. But like, I don't think, I don't think it's. Uh... Weirdos are not self-aware. I feel like I don't know I'll if I record. completely agree with that. I think that maybe weirdos might be self-aware, but they're not very aware of others. Uh, at, at the very least, they're not aware of how like their surroundings. other people perceive them or they yes. don't care how other people perceive them or they don't know the perception they're putting out into the world. Yeah. You know, I don't think that I, I don't think that it matters what other people think of you. I think it matters what you think of yourself and like, Like, if you don't know where you want to go or where you're at right now, like, you're just kind of, like, floating with the wind. I I would agree with you. I would disagree. I think it is important what people think of you because your reputation, what people think of you is really, it's all you have to trade on, really, in life at all, is if, like, people can trust you. Because people are making judgments about you, whether or not they can trust you, whether or not they think you're competent. And th- those are important things for people to think about. Those but are things you can you also want manipulate those things. Like you, like, <clears throat> like we we're talking about experts, but kind of like bring it back to that same thing where it's like, if you believe in personal integrity, you're going to be an integral person, right? No matter who's around and no matter what someone else thinks. And you're going to be in like, you're going to have integrity and yeah. honesty versus if I just care about what you, if you think I'm a trustworthy and integral person, yeah. all I have to do is trick you to think that. So like, you, I don't actually have to do the work to be that kind of person. Right. So you're saying that it's important. I think we're saying the same thing. I think what you're uh, focusing on is that instead of, you there's actually like have to be. Yeah, there's a like different motivation. You like be if I'm, trustworthy. If I'm motivated by what other people think of me, I'm going to manipulate I'm going to be trying to manipulate your version of me versus actually manipulating myself into becoming that kind Mm -hmm. of person. Yeah. But if I kind of want to be that kind of person, then the sort of um, like side product of me becoming that person is that people will recognize it and like trust it. Yeah. But other people are also mirrors that we use to look at ourselves. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But it doesn't mean that you necessarily have to care so much about. No, yeah, right. Like it's good to it's good to be um... disagreeable. Okay, super interesting podcast. Have you guys listened to Malcolm Gladwell or like read any Malcolm? Gladwell's I've heard books? of him. Mm-hmm. Yes, he has this yeah. really great like podcast called Revisionist History, and in one of them, he talks about being disagreeable. Yeah, and that like a lot of the decisions that you make logically. Like one of his example is pulling the goalie, mm. like pulling the goalie only feels okay. If it's like the last maybe minute or like, like half a minute of play. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
but logically like it's a higher risk but logically the only way that pulling the goalie is going to benefit you statistically is if you pull it like if you're down one goal like 10 minutes with 10 minutes left yeah or if you're down more pulling it for like the entire period yeah like like th- something that like someone like the reason that we don't do that is because people would be like abhor that idea and it yeah. doesn't feel right yeah and you're worried about what other people think of you versus like the statistical reasoning behind actually doing it and you're the more the reason why you wouldn't pull the goalie is so that you are kind of signaling to everyone that like hey i'm doing i'm doing the best job I'm doing the smartest thing and you couldn't, you can't really blame me if things go wrong. Cause I did the best I could do sort of a mm-hmm. thing. Whereas if you did something riskier, like pull the goalie, uh, even if it does have some statistically more significant probability of achieving a more positive result, if it goes wrong, it's going to look like super bad on you, bad on you. Yeah. So that's interesting. Well, we're, uh, We've been talking for a little over an hour now, and um, it's honestly, Lyndon, I've been very intrigued by all of the <laughs> things that we've been talking about. It's all been so interesting. It's all been so interesting, and we have a real-life scientist here, and I'm so glad <laughs> that she has been here. Um, wh- that Instagram, again, is the dot mind dot mental. S- the the dot, dot mental, mental dot, dot, dot game. Game. Game dot. dot. No. No dot. The okay. dot mental dot game. Yep. Instagram. Go to it. <laughs> and uh, Kara, thank you so much for being on the podcast. Thank um, you for having me. It was our pleasure. Lyndon, anything you'd like to mention in closing? You know, we learned a lot today. <laughs> we talked about a lot of things. <laughs> mm-hmm. I think what's important is that everyone remembers mm-hmm. life's a mission. Yeah, I'm <laughs> <laughs>